to this evening's AMA. It's been a couple of weeks since we did one of these. Uh, first off, to everybody who tunes in live, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, anybody who tunes in and watches the recording of this, thank you for taking the time to um, listen to this quarter. Uh, very special guest here today. Uh, it's been a bit of a long time in the making. I uh, sent a message um, a, a few weeks ago. I can't even remember when it was, but um, as fate would have it, um, schedules didn't align and it ended up working out right tonight. Um, so our guest this evening is Te Ore Ore and um, she's still quite young and has become already pretty prolific in the uh, Māori filmmaking space. Uh, starring in movies such as Hunt for the Wilder People with one of our past guests, Troy Kingy, who was her, her papa in that movie. Um, she's also starred in Cousins, uh, Kairako Season 2, all of which I recommend you guys go watch as well. Um, she's also written and directed her own short film, Era Nira, with um, a good bro of mine who's who was a DOP on that, um, Mike Jonathan, who's the man, um, and... She's in the upcoming Fina biopic, which comes out uh, the middle of this year, I believe. Um, but yeah, without any further ado, at the final, um, te ore ore. Kia ora, whanaunga. We actually found out that we were whanaunga related. Kei te pehia. Um, tēnā koe, e te whanaunga, mo te pōhiri mai ki aua, uh, ki te kōrero e ringa i tēnei. Hea tēnei, e momo hui, momo wānanga. Yeah, thank you. Oh man, um, I know you're super busy and super grateful <laughs> for for you, you know, giving us uh, an hour of your time, um, especially during this time. Like I just saw on your Instagram story, you're doing a bit of um, was it a voiceover mahi or what, what was that mahi you were doing? Yeah, um, so that was oh, that was for Mystic. The, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's a series on TVNZ On Demand, um, and I'll be joining the Mystic crew in season three. So, yeah, we yeah. did about three months of filming, um, Jan, Feb, March, and we were just finishing up on some uh, voiceover work, which was, yeah, it was pretty, it was cool, but I always feel like I, am, I, like I posted on my story, I always feel a bit awkward doing mm. it because <laughs> you're, yeah, you're having to, um, do the voiceover, but match it with how you performed it on the day. Yeah, true. But nah, yeah, that was cool. Mm. And I like what you said too. Um, in your story, I was from the outside looking in. It seems awkward, and and it's, I think it's kind of like that with um, you know different forms of art, where it's if so you're awesome. a stranger to it, eh, you know, and you yeah. you just see a glimpse of a random part of the process, you're like, oh, yeah. that looked pretty out of it. Mm. you know yeah. it's, it's cool I, that's one of my favorite things is seeing process and seeing how mm -hmm. artists create their mahi whether it's mm -hmm. um individually or collaborative um but let's let's talk about um the beginning of your um filmic journey like how, how did this how did you get into this world and what was what was that like Holy, how did I get into I guess I was it's a genetic thing. Oh, I guess like you know, I was born into being in a um creative space by the way I was brought up. Um we talk well Maori. Um and growing up Kutakuao Kute Kapahaka Ko, you know, te tikanga Māori, ko te noho ki runga i te marae, um, ko te tipu ki ngā reke reke waku tipuna. Um, and, I, yeah, I, I knew I always wanted to be a performer and I knew I knew that I never wanted to do anything like university. Like yeah. paper, and I, I'm very much capable of that. Hoi anō. <laughs> um, yeah. And... I, I knew, like, I kind of wanted to do kapahaka full-time. And yeah. then I, um, when I was little, up the coast, we, used, we had this thing called Te Rangita Wire. And it was like the Grammys? Yeah, it was like the Grammys of the East Coast. And we used to, all the kura up the coast, we used to 
make little short films and documentaries and all of that and do little skits and I guess mm. that's where my love for acting came from um yeah. yeah so it was probably when I was little like I was we'd been doing Terangi Tawaya since I was seven you know mm. um and then I there was an email that got sent out to all the kura up the coast and it was um for Hunt for the World of People for Taika Waititi's film. And yep. when that audition came out, um, all the aunties and stuff, they were encouraging me to do it because the, I guess, like the description on the audition thingy was you had to um, be Māori, you had to know how to ride a horse and you know, had to know how to sing. And at the time, <laughs> aha koe te fuakeo ki te tai rāwhiti and, you know, we're known to be kaupoi, ngā kaupoi o ngā tikau. Right. <laughs> I wasn't, like I wasn't a hearty horse rider like my cousins or like my sister um and so I kind of just winged it and I I just told them I was like yeah I can ride a horse I, I can <laughs> I can ride a horse and my so the audition description was all you had to do was sing a song and tell a joke and I feel like that is just such a creative way to do it um and introduce it to tamariki who haven't done auditions yeah. before. because now that I'm in this industry doing auditions, it's not like that and it's not mm. a really fun way to do it. And I feel like that was a pretty um, clever way, qu- clever process doing that. Like, and I feel like that was Taika's Fakaru to do it because mm. he wanted to see like the authenticity in um, Coasty Kids. Yeah, because um, that's him. He's a coasty yeah. kid too. Yeah, he is. And <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that that's where it all, all started was Hunt for the Wilder People. And once I got that role, that was when I was like, Fah, you know, maybe I can actually be on movies. The you know, mm. the small town kid, my Tiaroa, can be on movies. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it started. Yeah, no, that's choice. And um just a little another hononga. So my um my wahine, her kuya, her name she's passed away now was Rongo Mai Tapui. Mm. And <laughs> from Te Araroa, so wow. she's your whanaunga as well. <laughs> and, um, and her her cousin's name is Hine Rupe. So oh, know, holy. She's, uh, there. she's uh, yeah. um, King Hazel from over there. And I remember yeah. the first time I came over to Te Araroa, I was like, far, this place is far. <laughs> yeah. the, furthest, the furthest I had ever been was Te Kaha. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, that's where people usually stop. In, yeah, growing up, <laughs> never going to the coast. Like, the furthest yeah. I would go would be Opotiki, really. Went to mm. Omaiwe like a little kid, but I don't really remember. Yeah. And then actually traveling right around the East Coast. I was like, man, it is, like, um, different. Because I like, grew up in Waimana. And... Um, it's, it's a place sort of like, um, you know, like a te and in, in the way that you're, you're not just going to go there because it's it's right there. You know, it's not just a town that you just pass through. Like, you're going there yeah. to go there because it's right yeah. out of the way. You <laughs> yeah. know, and it, it, um, it was cool. And it was, it was cool when um, you were, you messaged me after that piece that I did of our tipuna. Yeah. Yes. And then when you said that, because I didn't even know, but of course, no, like, being a Melbourne, you know, yeah, because I, like, yeah, I saw crazy. that portrait and I was like, I'm sure like that has to be my Tamaro Wahari, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, hey, and then because I asked my papa, e mohiai te papa, but I was like, what's like the line? And it was, yeah, Tamaro Wahari, Taiha, Nawarihi. My who is my dad? Oh my, my oh my dad's nan, and then Koko pop then me. Yeah, far out. That's that's not that far back, and it's what no. I love about about Faka Papa and Hononga like yeah. that. And then um, you you realize that similarities that you have, you know, like mm. let's talk about like us for instance, you know, both being in creative spaces, yeah. and then you go. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool because growing up, um, like most of my creativity that I know of 
comes from my father's side and mm. um at Sipuna um Tamaru Wayari he's on my my mum's side. <clears throat> mm. so, yeah, so that's just a itifano, it's just a little random funny <laughs> just for knowing a tanga, <laughs> really. But back yeah. to you. Um I like what you said about the um audition process because mm. you know like we've we've seen it before um you know a bunch of Maori kids that when they're in their element, whatever that element may be, especially in the creative space, when they're on, man, they're on, you know, and it are. just oozes, oozes out of them. And yeah. I love that, that or your first audition, you know, who knows, like, well, what if that audition was the traditional acting audition and it was the one that made you go, oh, no, nah, this ain't for me. This is too out of it. <laughs> you know? it's, it's, uh, it's choice that it, like a catered in that way. <clears throat> How hard, like I remember um the audition. Like I remember so first it was like a Zoom one and then they wanted to see me in Auckland. And I was like I'm like growing up we never really went to Auckland. It was only mm. for like I don't know Fano Co Papa which was probably every five years or something like that. <laughs> and um so I was like oh whoa, we're going to Auckland like this is big but I was just like, oh no, just like, just relax. Like, this was me when I was 14. I was 14 at the time. I'm 22 now. Um, and I remember going into the audition room and seeing Taika, but I was like, nah, like, don't buzz. Like, it's all good. Because I was like, oh, he's from the coast too. Like, you know, we should have that understanding in Kate Pai. And so I walked in, you know, I said, kia ora, and I acknowledged everyone in the room, I remember, and even um, the Kaikameda to the person that was auditioning me and Taika and he was chill as about it. He was like, oh, killed it. Yep. Okay. Do your scene. And I was like, oh, okay. Did my scene, played my guitar. And then he was like, oh, here you go. More papers. <laughs> it was another, so it was another, it was my, probably my first or my second time seeing like a proper script in person. And um, he just pretty much just told me to read it. And it, he must have liked it and I remember when it finished he was like thank you and then he hugged me and I was like mm. oh. I was like hey like oh I feel like I've got it because <laughs> what yeah, you know what does it mean yeah, yeah. and then you yeah, hook out to get to kainga and then um he oh they emailed me again and they wanted to do a zoom hui and the zoom hui I feel like he was just testing me but I feel like that was more of a getting to know me kind of who um and after that he they called me at home and at the time there was like we don't have we didn't have wi-fi growing up or mm. or service at our house so they called us on our landline and it was this random fella who i know now his name is Stu, and he's a casting director and i still see him from time to time and he still remembers the first time seeing me and he like acknowledges how much i've grown since I was mm. 14 and um yeah and so when they said oh you've got the part I was like what you know like yelling to my papa <laughs> and my mama and Alfano and they were just buzzing mm. and it's um what what was it like growing up for you like did you um we fellas deliberately taught how to like express yourselves or like with like words or you know like and here's an example like as a young kid i remember our two of our nannies and one of our crower they um let us watch once we're warriors for the first time i can't remember how old we are. i want to say i was about seven maybe yeah. and my younger brother who would have been like six and our vocab like obviously that's way younger than 14 but i remember after it they asked us what we thought of it and we just had no vocab to articulate what we thought of it. So all right. we said was, oh, it was cool, you know, and, <laughs> you, you know, like, and not even knowing what that means. Like, there was literally our only word to describe was, we had two yeah. words, cool or dumb, you know? So, I like, as, like, very cool. not, yeah. Did you have, did you fellas know how to, like, express, like, how did you express? No way. I didn't know. I didn't. Nah, I don't know how to articulate myself like I articulate. Oh, I still feel like I don't know how to articulate myself. <laughs> but, um, like, speaking of that, though, I remember when I left Kura 
to go to, so I went to Toy Fakati for three years, which is the drama school in Wellington. And I remember going there and one of the Pākehā teachers, this was on our like audition weekend, and I remember him asking me, he was like, oh, why did you, it was something about the lighting, and he was like, why did you like the lighting in this part of the scene, and how did that make you feel? And I was like, oh, I liked it because it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I could say. And mm. I liked it because the shiny lights were made him glow. Like, you know, it was stuff like that. And yeah. then there'd be, um, and this isn't like belittling the parker next to me or anything. If anything, it's like being like buzzing at him. And then the parker next to me was like, you know, articulating himself. He was mm. using big words. And then in that moment, I felt real dumb. Mm. I felt like a dummy. And then, but, but then I knew that I could, I didn't know how to articulate myself in Pākehā, but I knew if I was to say it in Te Reo Māori, then it would come mm. across in a, um, I don't know, more authentic way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's interesting. So, you know, being a real Māori kid, mm. like, you know, especially going all the way up, growing up, all the way in Te Araroa, you know, super rural. And then the giant contrast between Te Araroa and Wellington, you know, in a, what was it, a drama school, in a drama school, which is even more niche, mm. you know, probably uh, I imagine there weren't many Māori um, alumni there. But um, how was... Um, how was what were the challenges like in there like as like trying to be authentic in a space that is far from what you grew up in mm. um i remember when i first went there and um this was the first audition day and i was looking around the room and there were barely any brown faces, but luckily I had my whanaunga with me, Akuhata, who is also an actor. Um, and we were both trying out for Toi Whakari. And we were just having like, fa, there's like, there's no Māoris here. Like, <laughs> and especially stepping into that space from coming my te in, in an environment where I grew up with my whanaunga, with my aunties and uncles as my teachers. And so going into that space was a bit ohorere for me. And I think I just naturally, like, went towards brown people because I felt comfortable with them. Um, and one of my first mates that I met was Krishma, and she was um, Fijian Indian. And I was like, oh, because, you know, prairi tōna kiri, prairi taku kiri, i, i piri atu au ki ohaya. <clears throat> and she e piri mai a ki au i te mea e prauri hoki. Um, so we were kind of in that together. And in my first year at Toi Whakari, and I've also had this conversation with one of my mates, Ngā Makorota, who come in my second year at Toi Whakari. And um, we talked about how yeah, it was just, it was far from who, who we are. And um, in my first year, I felt like this. Mm. Like, I felt like I was in a shell because, like like I said before, I didn't know how to articulate myself and and because I felt belittled from what, you know, the, the, per, oh, the tutor wasn't impressed by what I had to say. So I felt a little bit silenced. Mm. Um, but once I started getting comfortable with the people around me and there were tutors there who encouraged me to bring out my Māori tongue up because for ages I kind of hid it away in my first year um, mm -hmm. because I thought it was a little bit, yeah, I thought it was a little bit shames. Like, yeah, I did think it was shames because kāriau i ngā pūkenga i I didn't have the techniques or the vocabulary that um, my other mates at drama school mm. had. 
But once I started to embrace and once I started to bring more of home with me and articulate articulate myself by talking about pūrāko mai tu wākāinga, like comparing them to, like, for example, we did this, um, we did a show and it was about these, it was about like an American whānau in America and there was a, um, the character's name was Laura. And she had a little menagerie collection. And um, so the teacher was like, how, or the tutor, sorry, the tutor was like, how would you connect to this? And I pretty much just said, oh, I look at, if it was the te ori in me, that would be, my collection would be my taonga. Yeah. And so I just channeled my inner te ori ori, um, and looked at the mena- the glass menageries as my taonga. And um, during my time in acting, I've been told a lot that if you're not bringing yourself into your character, then there's, you know, there's no truth in it. Mm. Oh, mm. I love that. It's because mm. um, the thing is, eh, you know, like with acting in particular, you know, if you were to compare it to traditional art, like painting, for example. Mm-hmm. So in painting, you have paintbrushes, you have your mediums, like paint, um, terps or whatever else, meat, like thinners, those things, your canvas and your subject. And then um, in acting, you're, as an actor, you're not just um, like one paintbrush, for example, you know, mm. you're, you can be a big paintbrush, a small paintbrush, you know, everything yeah. in between. You can paint all the colors and all of those things are, you know, one part anyway. It, 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 like the range at which you can reach is determined by, yeah, like what you're saying, like the things that you bring into it. And this is me, this is purely coming from a fan and a, <laughs> a lover of, of film, um, because yeah. I love all forms of art, and film is a huge one. Like mm. I, I love, I love beautiful writing. I love um, beautiful acting. I love small acting, like subtle mm. acting. That yes. when you see it, only people who care about that stuff can see it. You know, I love, yeah. I love that. You know, yeah. and, um, I think that's beautiful. Like you're only 22, man. Like and you already mm. know all of that stuff to bring. <laughs> you know who you are into it yeah like, um, like i'm 30 and i remember when i was 22 i was at wintech and and um kirikiri <clears throat> and I, I'll, I'll be honest like i was pretty um like i went there and i was 19 22 i was that was my last year there and i was like pretty arrogant like no one would have known that i was arrogant because <laughs> i wasn't outwardly arrogant i was internally arrogant and what that looked like was being a person who was unteachable <clears throat> and you know mm. when you're unteachable you know, there's you've reached your limit so if yeah. you're not willing to listen to anyone you, you can't learn extra extra things and i it's pretty inspiring actually to hear how you were open to hear learn all of those new things to to take on new things um uh, <laughs> yeah oh like it, it wasn't even that i was open to it i was it was kind of like i had to yeah. You know, like I felt like I just had, you know, I was one of the first from my kura to go to Wellington and study. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I just had this responsibility not to fail. Um, yeah. And it wasn't... Was it reluctant? Like, were you reluctant to take on things? Or were you thinking about it in the way that, man, this is a, like what you're saying, this is a big responsibility. Like, mm. I'm not, this is not just me here. This is... No. You know, my my fano, my my rohe, you know those things. Yeah, my hapu, my iwi. Yeah, um, uh, and I, uh, if anything, they um, you know, you know, they might drive to do mm. things, and they um, <clears throat> and I said I've said this before, but like every time I step onto a new set, or every time, but it's something that I it's something that I've made a part of my craft like every to make me feel comfortable so every time I step into a set I 
try and look at everyone like my aunties and uncles or I try and look at everyone as my cousins um and because it's pretty buzzy like jumping on for example for mystic I um I had only so the fellow who was playing my uncle was Kirk Torrance and so I met him it was easy because he Māori hoki so he you know it was easy to get along with him and then the next week we were literally doing a scene about it was a real heartfelt scene like I love my uncle so much and I don't want him to leave and like I feel like that's so crazy how I have to channel my oh you know like I have to act like I absolutely love this person when I only just met him last week um but that's when I channel my uncles from home and I try and look at him like he's my uncle um, but over time though that relationship grew in a te ori ori kirk way um, mm. and, and you could see that in the you can see that on screen too because it's it's pretty obvious when it's not there yeah, mm. yeah. hard out man that's interesting I want to ask you um because I, I asked Troy when we did our AMA about um, Kapahaka mm. and how, and in Te Ao Kapahaka, you know, from Tamariki all the way up to Pakeke, um, you have every kind of person you can think of, every flavor of introvert, extrovert, and everything in between. And you have these people who are the shyest people you could ever meet. And then you see them on the stage, and if you told somebody that that's the shyest person you know, they'll be like, "There's no way, there's no yeah. way that person is shy," and they're like, "They're this big on the stage, you know." Um, yeah, yeah. And the the the, the photo was around. What? Like how how much do you think growing up in Kapahaka made a difference to to being able to act and to being able to to just flip a switch, you know, on, on the stage, mm. as soon as you, you're on, like, before you get on the stage, you're like, you know, nerves are there, or, you know, excitement is there, you get on the stage, and then as soon as you hear the first, I don't know, whatever command, or the strum of the guitar, whatever, you just flip a switch, and you're on, Yeah. you know, like, yeah, how, how's that, um, how has that played a, like, a, an important role in, in acting, and being able to just, yeah, flip a switch, I suppose. Uh, to be honest, I feel like if I didn't do kapahaka, I wouldn't be able to flip that switch. Because um, I there there was a an experience I had at Toy and I, this was when I was still coming out of my shell, and um, I was real shy when I first went there. Um, and then I had to do a scene in front of everyone. And it was a real emotional scene. I got up and I did it. And afterwards, everyone was like, like, whoa, like, where did that come from? And then they were like, have you had any acting experience before this? And I was like, nah. Like, oh, Nati Awards, the Tirangi Tawai I was telling you about. Yeah. <laughs> but not... <laughs> guess not professionally and mm. and I didn't know how I did it too but look looking back at the time I didn't know how, how I did it but looking back it came from taku tsui roto i te ao kapahaka mm. um, you know because you go from being harikwa you know you go from the waiata aringa oh no you go from whakaeke you know you're doing a haka you're real pukuriri and then you go into more te atea, you yeah. know and that's when you have your your tangi and your um yeah and that's how I knew how to flip my switch and so yep. I kind of just I just naturally unknowingly flipped that switch when I was mm. doing that um so yeah uh it yeah really does have a, a huge impact in the way that I carry myself as an, an actress um yeah yeah and the reason I ask it too is really just as a form of encouragement to to our own people out there who may watch this 
or who may be watching right now, if you're interested mm. in acting and you feel like, man, I've got no experience or like, oh, I don't know, like I'm too shy. But, you know, like yeah. let's say you've, you've grown up in Te Yeah. Look, Te Ore Ore has just illustrated the, yeah. um, the power of being able to just flip that switch. And, and another reason I bring it up too is um, back in – I don't know, when was it? A couple of years ago, I did a moko on our old band manager. <clears throat> and he was um, he was the music teacher as well at Whakatane High School. And we were just reminiscing because I hadn't seen him for a few years at that point. And we were just reminiscing. And back in my last year at high school, I did the Grease, production of Grease at our school. Oh, and then we were just talking about it and like talking about the audition process and and then, like, um, we did like a we had to sing Sandy for the all the boys had to sing Sandy as the musical like audition. And then um, he was just asking about it, mm. and I was saying like, oh, like for me, this this was unknowingly again. I just said, oh, I know you just. He's like, how did you do it? I'm like, how did you just like go into that character? I, was like, I don't know. You just, you know, it's just normal. You just do it. And he's like, no, it's not. It's not normal. You don't just do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I thought about it. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I thought about it and I thought about Haka and how all, this thing, all of those things we just talked about. And I was like, yeah. wow, right? that's, that's pretty profound. Uh, actually, oh, like you just reminded me, I remember um, an audition I did for this theatre piece our class was doing at drama school. And we had to prepare Pākehā song um, from that. It was like, oh, it was called Merrily we roll along. Oh, that cur- that name just curses me. <laughs> well, no. Um, I went into the audition and there was there was three Pākehā, um, what is it, directors in there and one Māori director. Anyway, I sung, first I sung my Pākehā song and it just, nah, it, it didn't hit the nail and it was terrible. I wanted to cry. And then the Māori Tudor, she said, Te ori ori, can you um can you perform a Maori song? And I had my poise outside of the door and she was like, and go and grab your poise. And I was like, oh, okay, easy. <laughs> like, yeah. we grabbed my poise, did my waiata, and then that's when they were like, that is what we want. And then um so the reason I got cast as the role, because I really wanted one of the roles and I mm. ended up getting it, only because I performed that poi and they wanted me to channel that into my character. Um, yeah. Man, that's fascinating. And mm. like I'm like I'm not even – this is not a – an ounce of me that wants to be an actor, but I'm, I'm feeling that, you know, like more possibilities that mm. because I've, I grew up in Kabaka, it feels like um, something that could be a possibility, you know. But um, mm. I remember that going back to the audition stuff, as because uh, I remember they, they went around, I'm not too sure how far they went, but when I was at primary school, they came to Waimana school to do auditions for um uh which one was it river queen river queen um and then i remember like you know like as moldy kids being similar to you fellas where you and your mates just go status you know and, you up, and <laughs> yeah, i remember yeah. just and we, we went down to the local memorial hall and the scene that they made us do was um you're you're in like a war zone, and your dad's just died, and he's over there. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> just felt like incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, um, you know, like, and I was super shy, mm. and like a lot of people who know me growing up know that I was super shy, but people who know me as like a adult wouldn't know it because most of the time when I interact with people, I can. I can be extroverted, but 99% of the time I'm, I'm introverted and I'm a hermit crab. Um, but it's it's um, really what I, was, I suppose what I'm trying to say is um, 
that it's for every type of person. You know, you don't have to be an extroverted person to do it. Um, anyway, let's let's go on to um, your first time on set, and you know, how you're talking about aunties and uncles. You know, you imagine them being like that. Was um how how was that first time on set like for Hunt for the Wilder People? And obviously, there would have been heaps of people there. You know, grips and camera crew, makeup, you know, wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah, what was that experience like? Oh, so that was pretty. That was pretty hard out, um, because. But I, I, I feel like it's important. I should mention this because at the time, so I had got the role, and then a week later I was supposed to film, um, but then I ended up losing my big brother, and. So they had emailed us and said, like, you know, is Te Ori Ori still keen to do it? Because, you know, ka te hanoi ma te taku tuakana. Um, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't even a hard decision for us to say no. Like, we straight away we were like, no, yeah, she's doing it. <laughs> because that's what my brother would want me to do. Mm. And so one of the, before we started filming, and this was before brother had passed away, um, Rachel House. Yeah. Rachel House, she was like, she was my first ever acting teacher. And um, so before that we had to, like, we prepared some of the scenes and she was actually the one who told production that, no, Teori will be doing it and we're not going to replace her because this is such a huge opportunity for her and her whanau. And so the first, my first week on set i te kai ngā tonu waku whakaaro mm, of course. at home but because Rachel and them Rachel, Taika and Troy i mōhio rātou that I was still, you know, mamai um, they ended up doing, we had like a fano kai at our motel mm. so they are oh, taika didn't end up coming but rachel was there Ireda, troy and julian who plays ricky baker mm. and, his, and itaua wa ite they were just straight up like poi poi manaki and anything to lift mine and my whanau mm. spirits because my hoki taku whanau. and so that side of things, and I feel like it's so important that you should, um, that behind the scenes things should be, you know, me, me rangi maori, taua ao, kia mm. ahe ao, tu, i roto i, i mua i te kāmena. So behind the camera has to be all good for me to be able to stand strong yep. in front of the camera. And because of that, that helped me so much during production. So when I, my first day on set, um, I felt the manaki tanga straight away. But it was, all of that was going on, but also the little tararua, little farm girl in me was buzzing at this huge production, the cameras, all the people, because I didn't, at the time, I didn't realise that it took a village, you know. That to many make, people, yeah. yeah that many people, um, to make it. And um, so Troy, who played my dad, he made it so fun for me too. And um, koe anō tērā i kahamanaki nei iaua um, mm. when I was on set. So, yeah. And also Taika, he's such a – he's just so funny. Like, he's a clown, eh? He's a like kid, he man, is, in the adult he's body. <laughs> like he is a clown and he still is to this day. Like, I saw him the weekend just gone. Oh, cause, so my side grind, I work in a bar. I heard of the and he come in. I was like, holy heck, look at this clown. Anyways, <laughs> and he comes next to the counter, and I'm like, oh, I killed him. And he's like, <sighs> he's going like this. And I was like, that's you. And I was like, yeah, it's me. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like acknowledging me on all my mahi and I was like, Fuck. 
no, this is Buzzy. I haven't seen you mm. in how many years and Kate Pira Tunu. And you know, he's still himself. He's still watching, you know? yeah. He's still, still watching himself. and he's still there. Um and there was this funny moment. I'm kind of going off to- topic now, but there was a funny uh, moment. He was being real cheeky. And I was like, nah, I'm not gonna serve you anymore. So I said <laughs> I serve <laughs> everyone around him besides him. And then he goes. Do you know who I am? And I was just like, oh my gosh. So yeah, he tonu. He was he's exactly still the same. And he peed mm. out on set and which helped me at the time. You know, I was still a kid. And I still I'm still a kid. But yeah. um because he was just so himself, it made me myself. You know, it was like, okay, he's himself. I can be myself too. Yeah. And that's when you enjoy yourself more when you're just being queer, you know? Yeah. And it's a, um, sorry, sorry to cut you off. It's, it's a, Mm. you know, oftentimes it's it's said, you know, it's said all the time. Oh, it's be yourself, be yourself. But it's, you know, it's pretty hard, man. (laughs) <laughs> it's, pretty hard. It's, pretty, it's pretty hard to just be yourself, especially when you're in an environment where yourself is way different to everyone else yes. around you. You know, and it's just like, oh, fuck, I feel like a weirdo. Yeah, <laughs> like, or like I've... yeah, like I, even when I went to drama school, surrounded by all these parkas and different cultures or whatever, I'd just be talking, and it would be funny to them. And I didn't understand that. I was like, I don't even do anything to be funny. Like, I'm just, you know. Yeah. Are you laughing at me? Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> well, I just start and, laughing too because I didn't know yeah, what they yeah, were laughing at. Yeah. And that's I feel like, yeah. yeah. And um, what was I thinking? I was, I was thinking about um, um, like the spaces that you find yourself in and what you were saying before about how pretty much like like attracts like you, you're just immediately drawn to whatever seems familiar to you. And then in your case, it, um, Toi Fakari was Kiri <laughs> Brown. You know? And, um, you know, it really, really, you're, what you're looking for is like safety, I suppose. You know, mm. because you feel a bit safer in in the space where you feel like people can relate to you. But, um, but like the segue, we're segueing to um, Kairako and a post that I saw you post up. Uh, I think it was right before episode one of season two, and you you did like a long ass spiel about it. And there's a there's a part in there that you said, and I really resonated with it. And it was um. I think, like, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's something along the lines like, I've, I've done all of these different types of projects, you know, over your over your career. But this one, man, like, this is it. You know, where we're telling um, Purako Māori about our tipuna, mm. um, with our people in te reo Māori, by Māori filmmakers. Like, yeah. what, was, what was that like? That was... Holy, um, I remember when I auditioned for the role, um, so I did my self-tape and then sent it through to them and then straight away they got back to my agent and they were like, "Is we would really love to have Te Ori Ori on board. And my agents had got back to me and said, you've been given the role, but do you want it? And I was like, well, why wouldn't I want it, you know? <laughs> and yes. then they were like, well, it doesn't pay. Uh, it wasn't like my rate or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was, in my head, I, I don't care. like, Because for me, uh, my Māori tanga comes first and my, you know, that – they're like at the forefront of my career. Anything to do with Tao Māori, I will, without hesitation, I'll be like, yep, yeah, namatahi, 
you know, priority. Mm. That's just me as an artist. And um, so I was like, no, I don't. Karehe hatere kia mehe me if I, if they want me, then I'm king. And um, but also it was that, but it was also like oh, actually like like yeah, I was king, but I was like, do I? This is a huge responsibility, um, and it's a huge role having to play a tipuna, mm. you know. And because um, Rua Mahu is of Ngāti Awa descent, and I'm he holonga ki Ngāti Awa, but I'm you know too hoi Ngāti Pro. Um, and I also asked the casino, who is Maria? Yeah, because she was looking after me while I was in Otero. I was staying with her when we were doing Kairake, and I was like, "Why? Like, why did you? Why did you pick me?" And then she pretty much just said, "Oh well, um, because it was a lead role. They needed someone who was experienced." Irotoi Tawa O, because have you seen some of the Kairake episodes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um. Knowing our wahanga taumaha, there's a lot of grieving scenes and a lot of... Yeah, you had some pretty heavy ones, man. Ah, heavy. And so she said they needed someone that could go into that aisle without... Yeah. Oh, she was just saying, like, I had my reo, he uri no tuhoi, and I could act. So it was just... Mm. Uh, yeah, it was. I just ticked all the boxes she reckons, and I was like, Fuck. And I was like, Oh, this was in the kitchen when we were having our dinner after a day on set. <laughs> Maria, she's straight shooter, man, tells it as it is. <laughs> oh, fuck. thank you. Keep like eating my kai, but it was just crazy. And then, oh, there was this another experience I had with Maria. So, have you seen the um. Giving birth scene yet on Kairaka? Yeah, well, yep. I'm up to oh, date. <laughs> well, that, that scene. So that day, jumped on set and it was a big day. So it was in the morning. It was like a grieving scene. At lunchtime, it was uh, it was another grieving scene. And then at the end of the day, was a giving birth scene. And just before that scene... Um, Maria, oh, they were like, can you, are you sure you can handle doing another, uh, this scene? Like, you've had a big day, are you sure? And then this is Maria talking to me, and then I was like, oh, maybe. And then she was like, do you want that Oscar? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, excuse me. She was like, just think about that. And then I was like, <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. So like that, he he told me for Karo kiro to itaku penati, and then I was like, holy mm. hell, yeah, I gotta do this because I, I really want that. And then, yeah. so yeah, and then um, ended up before the scene because I've never given birth in my life. Yeah. I've never yeah. been in a birthing room, and <clears throat> so I told Maria, I was like, well, can you just like, what was it like? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, this was literally 10 minutes before the scene. I was like, what was it like? Can you just tell me? And she was like, okay, it's not like on movies where they scream really, really loud and dramatically. And then what Maria did for me, she got heaps of mamas in a room. And we were all sitting down in a room and all these mamas were giving me like tips on what to do or what it feels like. And then I was like, Phew. and so I was literally in the room. <laughs> giving or you know doing my scene and I'm like yeah mm. but a little bit more of this and you feel tired at this part and blah blah blah, blah. I was like okay and they're like yep you're ready then went on went on the set and um yeah I'm not being a kumara or anything but like the director yeah I was like fuck like oh <laughs> and then um the director she was it Rangi Rangi? oh yeah I so Rangi Rangi was there yeah Oh, and bless his heart, because um, there was a, another. I'm sorry, well, I just keep talking about my fiacles, but there was it's another. Literally, scene. why we're here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was another scene um, I had gone into, and it was a grieving scene. And after it, like after cut, I was still in that mm. world, like um, 
my mind knew that it was not fake, but you know, it was acting. But mm. karitaku tina na imohi o kitoa. My body thought it was real, mm. but I was experiencing, and I felt real tomaha afterwards. And Rangi Rangi could see that. And then he came up to me and he was like, you know, okay, te pai koe. And I was like, no, like karo te pai. And then heaps of them just surrounded me and. Rangi rangi i taki nei i te tai karakia, and then yeah, and I feel like that's what Maori productions have over mm. other productions. Other productions, eh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's um because I've met rangi rangi on the set of Muru, and um mm. and it was it was funny because I had only heard his name as rangi rangi. And then when yeah. I saw his name on the start of Kairaka, his is his in um, Te Arepa. Mm. I was like, who's that? Rangi tuku noa rangi. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah. and then it, I put two and two together when I thought about mine and Maruya's kōrero that we had. And she was talking yeah. about Rangi Rangi being a director on there. And she was just saying that he was on. And then I saw his name pop up on directing that last episode. And I was, I was like, yeah. nah, fr- get the bro. And I remember on this date, and this is really just, I suppose, a testament to his taste in film. I was talking about, um, we were at lunch one day on on Muru, and I was talking about, like, uh, what's it called? Moonlight. Talking about Moonlight. And then he chimed in, and he was just like, bro, da 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 da. And he was talking about these other movies' suggestions. And I was just like, oh, fine. And I was just like, instant respect for his taste. And yes. then hearing about him as a director and like from Maruya now from yourself, mm-hmm. you know, bringing that um, um, Fakaro Māori to the space. Yeah. Game changer, man. Definitely. And like one of the things that I love about what you do, I saw another, I don't know if it was a, an interview that you did that was in writing, might have been a bit of reading that I did. But you're talking about um and correct me if I'm wrong too, like um just just jump in whenever you, you see fit, but you were talking about um when portraying Maori characters um having a certain level of respect and not wanting to portray um particular stereotypes in certain lights and making sure that if you see something off, like you as Te Ore Ore as an actor, that you bring, you pull the director up or the writer up on certain oh, things. Yeah. 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 Like, like um, yeah, well, what's, what's some of that, that been like? Has it, has it been difficult in those spaces or do you have those support systems around you that are just like, yeah, go hard, man. Pull them up. Yeah. Um, at first, like when I first came into the industry and when I, but uh, it was pretty, like I didn't know where I stood. Um, you know, hey, hey, Toira, there was an experience I had on Fina and um, in the scene we were doing, there was some te reo Māori in it. Um, but at, at that time, the Māori advisor, who was supposed, who is the who is the Māori advisor? He wasn't there at that time, and so it was just me, the boom fella, which is um, what's his name? Rani. I just know him as Rani. Blake. Rani. Yeah, Rani. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mama, eh? Yeah. Yeah, Rani. Yeah. He's too weird, huh? He's another for name oh, yes. over. Yep. Yeah, so it was me, Rani, and TK, who's my, Mikey, Mike Jonathan's son. Mm. We were the only, um, I guess, fluent Māori speakers who were on set at that time. And then uh, one of the actors was doing his scene, Irotui Te Reo Māori, but it wasn't right. Mm. And But only me, even the director didn't know that it wasn't right, but only me, Rani, and TK knew that. And then it was like, cut. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was like, do I say something? And then Rani came up to me and he was like, sis, like, kari te tika te reo Māori roto i tēnei wahanga. You know, it's not 
right? And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, should we do something? Um, and they were like, we were all kind of like, nah, because it's not our place because, Yeah, and that's a know, big thing, eh? Um, yeah, I'm it's scared. a huge thing. <laughs> like, in your place. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, I guess it would be like telling your kaimatsu, or oh, I'm just comparing, mm. yeah, kaimatsu would be the director and then would be, I don't know, we wouldn't even be on the pie. would be like in the way at the totoko or something, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was like, oh, like who? But at the time it was like, who are we to say this? Like, mm. it's not our place. But it was our place. Looking back, yep. it is our place to say something. Um, but I learned from that. Ahakua kareo, ahakua, I didn't say anything in that moment. It encouraged me for future projects to say something. Mm. Um, and so now whenever I'm on set, I just say it, you know, I don't care if, yep. and I, no matter where you stand in the production, whether you're a boom guy or the camera person or grips or props, if you know and hear that something ain't right, then yeah, say it. Um, mm. Because they, and oh, heaps of artists are open to that anyway. They're open to um, new, you know, solutions or they're mm. open to knowing what's right because they'd rather get it right than get all the backlash from it later on. Yeah. And if they're yeah. respectable people, they'll be like, oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, we don't know any better. Yeah. 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 And oh, thankfully, it's... yeah. Uh, yeah, luckily, like most of the time, all the directors that I've come across anyway, they've been real open to that. And yeah, uh, even though it's it is hard for me to kind of step out of my, because that's the last thing I want to be worrying about <laughs> when I'm acting. I just want to focus on me and my performance, and yeah. not have to worry about that. But that's when Teori Ori steps in and bring everything with me and everyone with me. Um, yep. Yeah, because that's the thing, eh? you know, for yourself um, mm -hmm. and the bros, Rani and TK. Yeah. It's not just the real Māori, you know. <laughs> that's yeah. the thing. Eh? It's not just. It's not just a just. If if, if mm. that makes any sense, it's like, yeah. no nah, man, this is this is an important thing, and I, I think it's a thing, you know, like when we watch um anything, any any kiriata that has the real Māori in it. When it's off, man, it's just, it, it might as well be way off. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, even if it's off, even if they're like, you know, they're giving it their best. But um, I think, um, you know, like Te Reo Māori is just like all languages. It's, uh, it's respect when you do it properly, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, no, nah, I'm glad you shed a bit of light on that because I only knew just a sliver of, of their corridor and I suppose that's like a, a ton or to anyone else in the industry who is um matatau ki te reo Māori to speak up or to um you know try your best to let our reo be shone or shown to the world in its mm. best light I suppose is what yeah. we're seeing um, what's it? Fifty-eight minutes. So there's, oh, there's. We're gonna go a little bit over, but I just wanted to talk first, just a little bit about your your own short film and like your mm. writing experience, and then like the shooting of that. Um, what, what was what was that like? It was it um, because Mike Jonathan told me a little bit about it when we did his uh, moko on his arm, and he oh, was just yeah. saying like it was uh, was it like four days or something, five days. It was like three. <laughs> three days. Yeah, yeah. How how was that? Oh, that was because it was my first short film. Um and actually I actually started so it was in my third year at Toifakari. So I went into Toifakari thinking I was just gonna do acting and that was it. But then um as time went on, they kind of encouraged me to start telling my own stories. And then I was like, oh, okay, like I'm not a writer or anything, but I can try. 
And then we had this fella, uh, not this, not just a fella, but um, uh, <laughs> Hone Koka, he's a director, writer, he's just like, he's amazing. And he was teaching us how to write at the time at Toy Fukari. And we were actually in lockdown. So that was the very first lockdown that we had ever. Yeah, and um, I ended up going home for that because I was like, I'm not staying in Wellington. Mm. And yeah, so Hokia Tikite Kainga, and that's where I started to write the short film. And um, lucky because I had my mama and my papa with me at home. And so, like, it was just wānanga most nights talking about, oh, how can, you know, how can we tell the story? Um, because the story is about the Ngāpuhi raids into Ngāti Pro, into Te, te, into te um, mm. in the 1800s. And, but my focus wasn't really uh, about the, the mamai. It was more about the tatauponamu side of everything and what the kids had to go through at that mm. time. So um, it was everything worked out pretty good because I was at home. And I had my resources <laughs> with me, literally in this room. Yeah. <laughs> like, so um, that's, I guess, that's kind of where it all started. And then a year later, had the opportunity to film it on the Maori land, and that's when I first met Mikey, Mike Jonathan, and um, oh, he tōna wairua ngako mahaki, tōna wairua mako yeah. like. He is such an easygoing and easy calm person. Calm oh, Like, calm is. <laughs> and, um, like, I remember the night before I was, um, we were, like, redoing the script and stuff because it was too long. Mm. And um, we had Libby Hakaraya, who is one of the heads of Māori then. Um, so she was, like, redoing the script with me too. And we were just, like, fully pulling it apart and sticking <laughs> it like together. Cool. Huh? This was the night before you fellas shoot this day one. This was literally the night before. <laughs> and I had already done my preparation with my little actors, who were my little cousins who literally lived down the road. <laughs> and so we were, oh, that was a crazy night. And then so the next day we all woke up and I was just like, holy heck, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what this story is anymore. And then, um, so we got on our set that we had made. Um, but, uh, man, lucky we had Matangas like Libby, like Mikey mm. um, on board with us because, yeah, they really, they, they, it's like, I feel like they were, they were like my Kapahaka tutors trying to pull me into doing hackers again when I don't want to get up on the floor. <laughs> That's what That's it felt one. like. And <laughs> but ended up doing it, ended up going through with it, and it just worked out so beautifully. Mm. Um, and just so lucky to have Mikey, Libby, and also my dad was there too. My dad, my mum. My whole whānau was there, mm. even because um, my big sister and they lived down the road. My little sister, she had just filmed her short film before me. <laughs> yeah, so she, so, so Libby and them, they were there for a whole week. And so first they did my little sister's short film, and then they did my short film. So Holy I was moly. able, yeah. So I was able to watch and um, shadow my little sister. <laughs> who feels like my big sister because she's always doing things before me. Yeah, um, yeah. And, man, oh, my, I I actually do look up to my little sister. I won't tell you that. But um, <laughs> she can do it, man. She's so onto it. So I was just watching her, watching how she worked with her DOP, which was Richard Curtis. Mm. Um, and just, yeah. And so I guess that prepared me in a way too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Man, and, and is there anywhere that we can watch it? Um, or is it in a circuit? So, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's finished. So um, we are having a showing of the short film sometime this year. It was supposed to be last year, but mm. because of COVID and everything. Last year happened. Yeah, yeah last year happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Choice. Mm. So we'll just keep an eye out um, on your, your socials and all that. Man, that's, that's cool. Because yeah. I, I remember um, when I, there was, uh, what was it? There was a, like a story about you, you and someone else, I don't know. It might have been your sister, I don't know. Mm. But it was about the lead up to the Māori Land Film Festival and some like, I don't know if it was funding or something that you first got. And I shared it on my Instagram story. Mm. And it was it was really about like your, your writing and your, your short film and stuff. And I remember just being like mind blown. And I was just like, frack, they're doing it, mm. you know? And because... Uh, I don't know if it was that year. It might have been the year before when I declared to myself that I want to be a filmmaker one day. And then like looking at you fellas, I was just like, too much. <laughs> and then when I was talking to Mike Jonathan about it and like I wanted to just talk to him all day just and just pick his brain about like that process and, and yeah. you already know how he's like he's pretty, um, uh, what is it, nonchalant. I think the word is, you know, it's pretty like kickback, you know. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine what it was, it's like him yelling. But, you know. And no, he never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't even put put it two and two together that it's him yelling. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like just hearing about your fellow's experience and I was just like, man, that's like super encouraging. Um, and in the way that you're talking about, like, looking up to your little sister, like, I look up to you fellas, you mm. know, as a, an aspiring filmmaker. You're already one, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're working <laughs> in this space. And it's, it's freaking cool, man. And I love how you're navigating the space. Um, and it's just know that we're watching and we're cheering, even if it, you may not be able to hear it. I'm sure you hear it all the time from your immediate whanau and mates and that, but... Yeah, we we see we see the mahi you're doing and it's freaking choice and um super inspiring. So that that's another reason that I'm grateful to have you on here. And the fact that we're related up the line is just mm. even more encouraging. Mm. But um before we um finish our our little kōrero, is there um some practical advice that you have for anybody out there who's an aspiring actor actress um or you know storyteller um in the film and television space <clears throat> advice um so i'm just trying to think real hard um <laughs> I reckon if I don't know, I didn't like for me, I didn't really uh what encouraged me to to get into that space and to um fully commit to what I'm doing now came from my tuapapa like you know came from mm. the people who raised me um and so it, I'm never doing this just for me you know I'm always doing it I'm always every day when I go on set I'm never just going for myself I'm always mm -hmm. carrying my whanau and my people with me um, and that's like my drive. And I feel like that's in whatever you end up doing and in whatever you're passionate about me, something my dad told me and something that's like been with me forever is um, me whakarongo kweki tofa tumanoa. Mm. So listen 
And I don't, I feel like that's not even the translation into your pocket. That's not even listening to your pocket. It's, it's, it's a bit boring. It's yeah. a bit boring. It's a bit boring. Um, and that will guide you in in whatever you do because I can't I feel like I can't give advice like go to drama school and then yeah. you'll be a man. Or yeah. there's heaps of different who are here you can take to get there, but drama school can help you get there. Mm. Or you can like me, you can do a random audition and end up being in one of the biggest movies in Aotearoa. Um so I don't have like a straightforward ad- advice, but I'll just say, yeah, mm. choice. I think that's a, a beautiful way to end it. I think um, a thread that's kind of run through our whole quarter has been about um, I suppose one knowing who you are and if you don't know who you are um go searching you know f- try to figure mm-hmm. it out put yourself in situations and spaces that can help encourage you finding out who you are um and the spaces that you go into you don't have to be less of yourself i suppose you know yeah. like you can be all of yourself, and if if you can't in a certain space, then maybe that's not the space for you. Maybe you go find another one, go find another room, yeah. or go make yeah. one. You know, and yeah, I think that's a um, it's a fitting thing, especially as as a a creative person. You know, in a, in a creative space. Um, the thing about being an artist in any form is only you can make the art that you make. You know, and yeah. like don't, don't make the art that your classmate or your your bro is making. Like, let yeah. them make their art, and you make yours. Whatever that looks and sounds and seems like, even if you haven't seen it out there, you mm. you may have seen examples of it. But yeah, go out and make your art. Um, but ete fanaunga. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, nga mihi ki a koe. Um. Um, all of your collaborators, everybody who has helped shape you and make you into um, the person that you are, that we are all, you know, grateful to to watch grow on screen, even just this, even though it's a small sliver of your life and who you are. Um, we're grateful and grateful for you sharing your time with us um, this evening. Uh, everybody who's watching live, thank you for tuning into this um, kōrero. Uh, anyone who's watching the recording of this, thank you as well. Um, be sure to go check out all of those things we just spoke about, Kairako, which is on Māori TV, On Demand, amazing. Uh, cousins, Hunt for the Wilder People, surely fellas have already seen those. Um, keep an ear out and an eye out for Erangira when that comes out. Fina when that comes out. Um, Mystic Season 3 when that comes out. Um, but yeah, Ete Whanaunga, thank you. Uh, a million thank yous. And um, good luck with your journey. We'll be watching. I'm definitely in awe and one day, that's us. <laughs> Yeah, that's us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Man, not too much. Not me. Tēnā koe, te